Maryland Police Association President Aaron Schmaus was one of our first guests on Eye on Northwest Politics, and a lot has happened since then, including a record pace of shootings in the city, several of them deadly. An officer involved shooting death, a new contract between the police union and the city, and city leaders who seem overwhelmed by the city's problems. Sergeant Aaron Schmaus returns as we get his take on all of these issues. Thanks for being here on Eye on Northwest Politics. Thanks for having me back, Ken. Appreciate it. Now, we had a news conference uh, just this Tuesday. It featured everybody from the police chief to the mayor to the DA's office to uh, the FBI special agent in charge, all promising an all-out assault on the gun violence problem. Uh, is it too little too late, or were you heartened by what you heard? You know, the thing that's so challenging about these conversations is you know, a lot has happened in the last couple of years that we could look at as causal factors of kind of where we're at today. Um, we have people on our city who are hurting and who are dying. This last weekend, we had kind of all different kinds of violence. We had, you know, a free speech event that led to a mass shooting. We had, you know, I'm a father, tragically, um, a mother get killed and her two children shot. And I, I just, you know, that, that to me um, is unacceptable and just completely unconscionable. Um, and then we had a very dangerous situation that our officers tried to resolve and uh, that led to the officers use of deadly force and so um, we need to be focused on solutions um, I'm, I'm glad to see that the uh, the full kind of um, body of of the local government is being brought to bear we have a lot of work to do and we need to be focused on how we can get things done um, i think more than focusing on the last two years at this point well, we talked before you indicated that police didn't really have the tools or the personnel to handle everything being thrown at them right now. Is that still the case? I mean, look, we, we have experienced um, a catastrophic staffing um, decline, and it's not just, I mean, I think it's very important to spell out the entire situation. You know, 911 calls start with BOIC. Our dispatchers are critically understaffed. We have 911 calls holding at times for more than 10 minutes non-emergency calls holding for three hours. And this leads to both the, the, the slowing down of help getting where it needs to go and an increased frustration. Our officers, you know, we have not enough officers to respond to situations in a holistic way. Um, and then our detectives, the amount of time that they're having to spend, the amount of work that it needs to be done, um, everyone's exhausted and we do not have enough resources. Um, I think the conversations about street response and other, uh, you know, public safety model uh, pieces being added into the infrastructure are, are steps in the right direction, but we need to be honest about the situation we're facing. Um, we need to be honest about how when people should call 911 and how and the real like kind of the, the global need we have there because it is at every level of the criminal justice system. At that press conference I mentioned, the mayor had this to say about the city's leadership during these troubling times. Take a listen. And I want to remind people that some of the investments that we took as an administration, we did so against opposition, opposition from some of my own colleagues on the Portland City Council, opposition from people in the community, opposition from the press. When we proposed the focus intervention team, which is now on the street, seeking to prevent and intervene in cases of gun violence, uh, there was only one vote on the Portland City Council in favor of funding that team. That vote was mine. So, Sergeant, at this point, do you believe every member of city council is on the same page when it comes to effectively dealing with the gun violence in Portland? Uh, look, everybody who is on city council uh, yesterday voted to invest in public safety. Um, the conversations, everyone, every member of the city council came to their seat um, with different lived experience and with different lenses. And so I think the important piece is we're now hearing um, that, that the problem is being identified and that we've stopped pointing at law enforcement as the problem, and that's good. Um, I agree with, with Mayor Wheeler that um, a couple of years ago, this discussion was, was significantly more nuanced, and I'm glad that we've moved to a place where the conversation is about solutions. Um, I've spoken with every city council member, and every single one of them is having conversations right now that is focused on how do we get the work done, how do we address crime and violence, and how do we do this in a way that we, again, bring all of the different um, people who can have a, a piece in the solution together. So um, we're in a better place today than we were two years ago. Um, the biggest thing is that it takes stamina to solve these problems. It takes not being reactionary. 
um, and not kind of changing course if something happens that might distract us from our end goals. And so um, I'm heartened by what I'm hearing today. I'm hopeful that we are able to continue this conversation moving in the right direction. And I encourage everyone in the community to have the stamina to see us through the problems we're facing. The Portland Police Association recently signed a new $56 million contract with the city. It includes recruitment incentives, pay hikes, uh, also expands the Portland Street Response Team, and also a framework for disciplining officers who do something yep. wrong. So what do you think of this new contract, and did it address all of your concerns? Um, you know, you heard people on city council say no contract is perfect. Uh, you know, contract negotiations are a discussion, they're not demands. And the thing that's very important for me, this was my first crack at kind of sitting on the inside room. Um, you know, my officers are city employees. Uh, we're, we're speaking with our employer um, and we wanna make sure that this conversation is based on the framework of how do we help get new people in the door? How do we support the people that are here? And how do we make sure that we're supporting our officers through the difficult job that they have? Um, no, no police officer is afraid of accountability, is afraid of being held accountable. Um, you know, I, I feel like this discipline guide, um, this uh, corrective action guide is, is um, it's binding. It's less confusing from the standpoint that people, when they go and do the work they're asked to do, they should know that if they do step, uh, step across a line somewhere, what the consequences will be. And the one piece of this discussion that I was most happy about, we speak as a community a lot about restorative justice. Barring somebody doing something that is overtly and obviously terminable, we need to support our officers and make sure that when they make mistakes, we're doing what we can to make sure that they have the tools they need to be successful in the future. And so I think we accomplished that. Um, you know, financially, we got to a place where we were able to offer some, some support for our recruiters and also support for our members who have been through a very difficult time. Um, and the street response conversation, I think is, is exactly where it should be. How do we help our public safety professionals do their work and do it together? Um, this is all about working together and I'm very happy that the conversation landed in that place. We started off this conversation talking about last weekend, which was one of the deadliest weekends in Portland that we've ever seen. This is what uh, your police chief, uh, Chuck Lavelle, had to say about it. Uh, this was probably one of the most deadly and challenging weekends our city has experienced. Uh, it's also one of the most heartbreaking. Uh, people are dead, people injured, lives destroyed over senseless violence. Uh, right now, the level of gun violence, the increasing homicides is wearing on the community as well as our officers, supervisors, and investigators. What's your reaction to that? And how did your officers respond to having to work last weekend? I know it was tough on a lot of them. Um, you know, if you even back a little bit further up, you know, we had an officer shot at, and we've had, I think now five officer, uh, officers shot at in the last six months. We had an officer shot um, as well uh, during a very uh, terrifying incident. Um, everyone is just exhausted. Um, you know, I, I, this has been the most difficult time that I can remember in law enforcement. My, you know, my dad was a police officer here for 30 years. I've been around the, the police community my entire life. Um, our officers, our, our, our sergeants, our criminalists, our, our dispatchers as well, are at this point of kind of how do we move forward because we want to serve our community. Um, children being shot in the city of Portland, I mean, we, you have a one-year-old and a five-year-old who are driving or sitting in the backseat of a car and they're shot. We are at an inflection point as a city. Um, it is going to take, again, our officers need the tools and the support to go and do the job they need to do. And that will include um, patrol work, interdiction work, stopping and interacting with people and finding ways to investigate and ultimately take people into custody when they're engaged in violent acts and then having them prosecuted and have that course seen all the way through. So officers are tired, they're frustrated, they're resilient, um, they're still showing up today, um, and they just want to help make our community safer. Sergeant Aaron Schmoutz, uh, thank you for joining us on Ion Northwest Politics. You're welcome, Ken. Thanks for having me.